Dustin Poirier gave his take on Conor McGregor pulling out of UFC 303 for a broken pinky toe. Dustin agrees with critics and thinks that's no reason to pull out of a fight. He also says that he still wants to whip Conor's ass. Dustin said, dude, a pinky toe. I've fought with so many injuries. Like Conor said, he fought with a lot of injuries. i fought with a lot of injuries over the years, but a pinky toe doesn't seem like a reason to pull out of a fight. But also, giving him his respect, I don't know the severity of it. Did he damage ligaments? Is it the muscle in his foot? There's a lot of stuff going on inside of a foot. There's a lot of small bones, so I don't know. If it's just a pinky toe, I think that's not a reason to pull out of a fight. I want to whip his ass. The other day I saw him say something. He's trying to bring that out in me. He wants me to fire back. I just go about my day. But of course I want to say something right back and try to set up a fight with him, but it is what it is. Sean O'Malley and Tim Welsh posted a new skit if Trump fought Biden. Trust me, you don't want to fight me, I'll knock you out cold. Daniel Cormier discusses a potential fourth fight between Conor McGregor and Dustin Poirier. DC does not believe that Conor could beat Dustin at this point. We both know that these two are tied so much together since 2014 that any time you talk about Conor McGregor and his greatest rivals, Dustin Poirier will have to be in that conversation. But there are some things that happened over the course of that fight and that series of fights that I don't know bode well for Conor McGregor. Dustin Poirier found his swagger in those fights, fight two and three for sure. And when a guy like Dustin Poirier finds his swagger and finds his rhythm, finds his confidence, they're very difficult to deal with. So I don't really love, outside of how much of a big fight it would be, the chances that I would think McGregor has against Poirier right now, especially the Poirier of today. But Dustin said uh, he crossed a line. Things that you can't come back from. I want to whip his when I see the tweets of him going off. So then the MMA junkie went on to ask, is a fourth fight possible? Dustin responded, I have no clue. I don't know. But even that, right? He didn't shut it down. He always was a little bit on the fence about whether or not he was walking away. But as we get away from the April fight, it seems more and more likely that the diamond is gonna come back. But that leads me to this question. If the diamond comes back, did he really leave or did he really retire, right? Or was it just a time to reset his mind? I think he should fight. And I think he should fight only the big fight. Anato Moicano and Gilbert Burns think Benoit St. Denis should have kept his mouth shut about having a staph infection during the fight against Dustin Poirier. Gilbert says it's a rule among fighters that you don't reveal that type of information unless you win. Anato takes on Benoit on September 28th. He play, he, he passed that book, you know, because we fighters, we have the manual, you know, whenever you lose a fight, you give no excuse. If you win the fight, if you have a staph infection or anything, if you win, you say, hey, I had a staph infection and I, and I beat that guy. Yeah. But if he's on the, on the other way around, if you have staph infection, you lose. Oh. So he but, didn't, he didn't how use the crazy, book, you know? How crazy is that? Everybody has a staph infection this year, mm. right? I fought with a staph infection on February. And, and I just say that because I win the with fight. The, the Drew Dober against one. Drew Dober, exactly. Man, I was I was bad. Like two two weeks before the fight was very bad and antibiotics. And I still won the fight. And like you say, if I lose the fight, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say. Quiet. But but it's happened to everybody, like Proracha, Islam Makachev. It's everybody. it's just crazy. Yeah, but it happens, you know, those guys freaking dirty. They don't take a shower after training. <laughs> they should. But, I mean, we all training, right? It's, all, it's, it's physical. We train. We're going to get cut. We're going to hurt. So, like I said, that guy didn't play the manual. If you get hurt, if you lose, stay quiet. So, but that's why I think, I think, I think on striking, Moikan is so long, it's going to be hard for that guy to come. Especially training with Dustin. Dustin saw that guy, felt the guy. And we'll see if if he shows up the way he did against Dustin, I think it's gonna be a wrap. But let's see, you know, if that staff infection was really making he slow it down, makes his guys think. I think it's gonna I be I don't good. know, and I don't give a f my Especially brother. gonna be five rounds. I'm now. telling you, yeah. I'm not losing my brother. I don't no care. No way, no if way. If it's Benoit Sandini, yes. Islam Makachev, yes. I don't f 
care, man. Five rounds. I don't care. I'm going to Paris and I'm gonna win that fight, my brother. That's the only thing that I can say. And you have the things on your mind after the fight already? No, nah, bro. A little no. before nah, sure he has. John Jones has been charged with two misdemeanors for the case involving the drug testing agent a few months back. The agent was identified as Crystal Martinez. According to MMAfighting.com, she was sent to John's home to collect a urine sample on March 30th. She claimed that John appeared agitated after he was unable to provide a urine sample and he was offered the opportunity for a blood test instead. Martinez then claimed that John began asking them questions, including if they had money because he was going to sue them. She also claimed that John allegedly grabbed her phone and started recording them. She said that she was terrified because John was standing less than a foot away from her during the incident and she was afraid that he was going to hit her. John issued a statement back in April. He said, I was recently visited by testers while I was celebrating a birthday and taking a nap. Upon waking up, I was caught off guard by the unprofessionalism and protocol by one of the testers, which caused frustration, leading me to use some profanity I regret. However, I want to emphasize that at no point did I threaten, get in anyone's face, raise my voice to anyone, or engage in any form of assault. It's unfortunate that false news has been spread without proper fact checking. I want to assure you that I will vigorously defend myself against these baseless accusations. The truth is, the incident simply did not occur. So John has been charged with assault, a petty misdemeanor, and interference with communications, a misdemeanor. His virtual bond hearing is scheduled on July 17th. If convicted of both full charges, John could face jail time that would be less than one year total, up to a $500 fine for the petty misdemeanor, and up to $1,000 for the misdemeanor. In a now deleted Instagram post, John posted footage of that day along with his statement. He wrote, I want to clarify that there is a video showing both drug testers leaving my home after the testing session, where we exchanged a high five and a hug. Although I was frustrated with the unprofessionalism and used profanity out of frustration, it ended friendly and amicably, nothing threatening at all. And that's going to wrap it up for the news. Thanks for watching. For daily MMA news and content, subscribe to Full Mount MMA and click the bell icon to be notified when we post videos. Here are the three top comments from last video. The first one's from Arkham Raised. It says, if this fear card is actually O'Malley versus Marab and topped off with Max versus Ilya, it's going to make the rest of the year look like they're at the apex. The second one says, Sean O'Malley mocking Bantamweights for their height while fighting in their division as a six feet tall. And the final one's in reference to Kamaru Usman saying that he wants to see more grappling from Alex Bejeda to prove that he's pounding for pound. It says Kamara wasn't saying that when Izzy was pretty high in the pound for pound rankings. In what world does a pure striker need to become a full on wrestler to prove he's the best fighter? If those wrestlers cannot take him down and get knocked out, it's irrelevant. That being said, Alex really haven't faced a full on wrestler yet, while there isn't many in light heavyweight. Those were the three top comments from last video. If you want to be featured in the next one, all you have to do is comment down below. And if you missed yesterday's news, click the video on screen right now to get caught up.